Hey guys, it's Angelica. Um, today I'm going to be doing a video, obviously. It's a wet specimen tutorial. A lot of people ask me how to prepare wet specimens, so I thought I would show you guys my technique. There's a couple different techniques you can use, but um, this is the one I like because it's cheap and fast and it gets the job done. So I'm going to show you guys that today. It's really easy. won't be a long, complicated video or anything. So what you're going to need is you're going to want an airtight jar, as you can see here. A little airtight jar. Glass. Look. Something dead. I chose to use a frozen feeder mouse. I recommend people start with small stuff like this because, you know, they're really easy to find and they're pretty inexpensive. So I just got this in the frozen section at Pets and Company. So you can go to any pet store and if they have frozen food, they'll probably have some mice and rats and stuff in there for you. So I recommend doing that. And then I have my, I'm going to say it wrong isopropyl, propyl, propyl, whatever, rubbing alcohol. You want it to be as high as you can get. This one's 91%. I got this at Walmart. Um, it's pretty inexpensive and it will work. So I'm using that. Um, I'm not going to use gloves today because it's just a pet store frozen mouse, but um, I recommend using gloves if you guys do any animals that have lived in the wild or any animals that have been dead for a while because of uh, germs and stuff and wild animals carry a lot of germs these guys just kind of like I'm sure they're germy but I'm gonna wash my hands when I touch it and it's not gonna be as bad as like Igor because Igor had bugs on him so uh, let's get started I already rinsed him off after you thaw them for the frozen you thaw it and then I washed it to make sure there was no debris. Uh, he had a little blood come out of his ear, so I wanted to clean that off and make sure it wasn't going to be in there. So um, this is what he looks like right now. Um, I kind of just picked one. They're in frozen bags, so they're kind of hard to see how they look. So I kind of just feel around for one that I know has all of its parts. Oh, there he is. Aw, so cute. It's a boy. He has testicles. He's a man, actually. Um, so yeah, I rinsed him off. So now what you're going to do is you're just going to put him in. You're going to put your dead animal in your jar however you want. I like to do different ways for each specimen so, you know, you got some variety in there. He's so cute. Oh, I don't like this. Okay. Give me your tail. I'm trying to put him in almost a fetal looking type deal. Because I don't know. A lot of my wet specimens look like they're in a fetal position because I don't know. It's a cute position for something to be in, I guess. Okay, let me do this over. I got it. Make sure you buy a jar with a big enough opening in it for your specimen so that you don't have to worry about uh, it not fitting or damaging it. So that's how he looks in there right now. You can see his little face. So now we're just going to take the alcohol and hopefully it don't spill. You're just going to pour it in there. Fill it all the way up. Ah, I spilled. And there we go. And now seal it. And then wash your hands afterwards because it's super gross. I like to take a little rubbing alcohol on a paper towel 
and you know wipe my hands anyway and uh, wipe the outside of the jar so it's nice and clean and uh, there you have it my little wet mouse specimen he's super cute super cute and that's pretty much it it's pretty easy um if you're using a larger specimen sometimes it's a good idea to pour some of the rubbing alcohol in the specimen's mouth or even better you can buy syringes and inject it directly to small amounts into the like cavity body area to help preserve like organs and things that it would be hard for the alcohol to get to fast enough so yeah that's pretty much it before you guys know it you'll have your own wet specimen collection to make your house more comforting and keep you company so yep yeah. Uh, if you guys have any other questions, uh, you can comment below or you can send me messages on Tumblr, whatever floats your boat. I hope this helps you guys. Uh, if you guys end up doing it, let me know how it works out for you. And on a side note, the rubbing alcohol does cause discoloration over time. Like this guy is about two years old and you can see the color difference in the one we just did and this one. You can always change it because it is an inexpensive chemical. You can always change it out and then it will be clear again. I mean, it's pretty easy. Make sure you do it in either a well-ventilated area or outside because there is a difference between rubbing alcohol smell and rubbing alcohol that has a dead thing sitting in it for a long time smell. So yeah, you definitely don't want a mouthful of that, so be prepared. Uh, so I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!